Okay, uh, good morning. It looks like that I have enough social distancing that I'm gonna take my mask down just so that I could talk a little bit better. So first and foremost, thank everybody for coming this morning. Um, I know that we told you that we were gonna um, keep you updated, keep the public updated because we want them to know that we are all working together uh, during this time to ensure public safety um, is for everybody. So today we have several different speakers. We have some of the cities with us um, as well. Um, so they'll give you a little bit of what we're doing. But uh, most importantly, what we've talked about in the past week was um, the medical surge. What are we doing to relieve capacity from our hospitals? Because we know that our hospitals will be inundated just from our regular uh, work that we see coming in and out. So we have said that we were gonna put beds together so that we could manage that surge. So most of you know that we have been working on the beds for the homeless. Those are coming online soon, and so we'll keep you updated as we come online. What I would say to the public is thank you so much. We had so much support from people that want to help and be part of that discussion that um, we feel comfortable and ready that we will absolutely be able to care for them. Um, secondly, um, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the beds that we have in contract today and we are working to get them up and ready to go. And know that this work is going on every single day that um, we are working through this. It, priorities change a little bit, um, but we are working hard to be prepared and to be ready um, so that the general public understands that we take this serious and we're all in it together and we will do it. So before I do that, I want, I want to tell people, um, there's some great things that you're doing. Um, we are doing well on social distancing within our state. Um, so we should be commended for everybody taking that very serious. Um, as the governor said, social distancing is making a difference and we want to encourage people to continue that social distancing um, piece. But along with that social distancing piece comes this please don't forget to check on your neighbors. Uh, many of my senior neighbors I call each day just to see that they're doing okay because social distancing for some is very hard, um, but it doesn't stop you from picking up the phone and talking to your neighbor to make sure that they're okay, they have what they need. It doesn't stop you from calling the kids um, in the classroom that they may have had just so that the kids can also talk to their friends um, because this is all new and very different for everybody. But what I will tell you, you are saving lives every single day that you stay home and you're not spreading this virus. So I thank you on behalf of Clark County Commission but on, ha on behalf of the entire Valley for doing your part and staying home when you can. Um, but let's talk about those beds that are out there. So as of today, we have 32 beds at the Salvation Army, which are for individuals who are 65 and over and have underlying medical conditions. Why is that important? That's important because these folks are at a higher risk um, to uh, getting the virus and to having complications. Secondly, I mentioned last time we have a partner at Crossroads of Southern Nevada. They currently have 39 beds that they have been working with us for isolation. We also have well care services, which is 114 beds. And those 114 beds are also available for isolation and ready to go. So that means that in our community today, we said that we would work towards the goal of 500 outside of our homeless commitment that we had. We have 150 of those 500 beds solidified and we will continue to work every day. We're already making calls, trying to get ready for the next one. So with that, I just wanna say again, thank you to everybody for adhering to the social distancing. I know it's very hard for all of us at this time, but it really is saving lives. If you don't need to go out, please don't go out, but please don't forget, we're such a compassionate community. Call your neighbor, call your child's friends, check on them, make sure that everybody is um, still doing okay. Um, so now I wanna introduce uh, Kevin Schiller, who is over uh, Assistant County Manager to talk about um, how do we all cope with this? Cause this is hard for everybody. So I want to give some tips to the general public on things that you can do. So Mr. Schiller.
Good morning. Um, as everybody knows, uh, with people being isolated and our changes and the impacts to each of us and our families, one of the key pieces to this is really um, the behavioral health and the mental health side of this and stress management. So one of the key pieces, people that may be experiencing immediate crisis, those that are really struggling and need to talk to somebody right away, um, and or those that need local resources, the, the biggest uh, resource that we can lead you to is Nevada 211. Um, I've handed out a sheet which talks about various resources, but for purposes of simplicity, people in crisis, people that are struggling to manage things, Nevada 211, which is as simple as dialing 211, will connect into centralized resourcing so we can support um, anybody that's out there in the community. Um, this is in collaboration on a statewide level with the state of Nevada, and they also link into our county resources. In addition to that, that resource line can also assist as we look at social services and we look at those in financial crisis as we continue to work towards rental assistance and other pieces that can be beneficial. Uh, one of the key things that I wanna make sure I emphasize with the changes and the financial impacts of families is some people do not want to reach out. Some people are afraid to do that. Um, what we want to really do is encourage people to call Nevada 211 so that they can get the help they need and so we can assist them. Um, again, this will create an open door as we look at resourcing for other areas so we can help reduce that stress level and help with that management. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Chief Steinbeck um, to come up and speak a little bit. Thank you, uh, John Steinbeck, Fire Chief for Clark County Fire Department. I'm also the Emergency Manager for Clark County. I wanna thank uh, Kevin Schiller for the work that he's doing uh, with those social services. A lot of times, uh, people like me that are in uniform and I get a badge, the, the public's very quick to, to, and we love it. They come up and they thank us for our service, but there's a lot of people out there that are, that are keeping this community safe and going that are not wearing a badge and uh, Assistant Manager Schilling is one of those. So thank you very much, Kevin. Um, uh, you'll see on the side of me here, I've got uh, General Barry from the uh, uh, Nevada National Guard, and then I've also got Justin Luna, the Chief of the Nevada Division of Emergency Management. Uh, they're both down here to assist us with um, uh, working through a lot of the logistics and the coordination, and the reason that they're standing behind me at this point is to, is to just show uh, everybody how um, unified we, we absolutely are. A lot has been in the news about the National Guard's involvement. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody's well aware that uh, we do this all the time with the National Guard. Uh, a lot of times it goes unnoticed, but uh, we, work, we work closely with the National Guard all the time. And uh, when the National Guard comes in, they integrate in with the local command structure. And it's, and it's pretty seamless. So they work as a force multiplier for us. Um, with any of the activities that, that we may need. And uh, right now that's a lot of logistical support, so they're assisting us with that. Uh, the PPE situation has gotten a little bit better, uh, and I, and I want to stress a little bit better. Um, we still have a lot of shortages uh, in regards to PPE. Um, we certainly uh, are still facing a lot of the same challenges, but we have received the national stockpile here, and the last of it will be distributed out uh, by the end of and tomorrow to those uh, organizations and, and jurisdictions um, and, and our uh, frontline health care workers as far as it'll go. It'll still leave a lot of shortages. Uh, so donations have been coming in and the purchases, and that's what the National Guard is, uh, is helping us to go ahead and not only bring those in, but also to push those out. Um, for local donations, though, uh, we still have our, our donations manager and that phone number is 702-455-0006, and also can be reached by email at uh, esf6.donations at clarkcountymac.com. And uh, so uh, uh, that's how we can go ahead and utilize the donations and, uh, and also um, assist with some of the, the needs that are, that are here in uh, Southern Nevada. Um, as far as the fire department goes, I wanna just let you know what I did last week. Uh, we're still at full strength. Um, we're running our calls as, as we always have. 
um, and you can expect the same level of service as you've, as you've always gotten from the Clark County Fire Department and your other area fire departments. Uh, we've been able to maintain that. Um, you will see um, more often on, on, at times, you know, I've got my mask here and uh, the people that are coming to see you every day, they'll have their mask on as well. Um, that's not only to protect our first responders, but uh, to adhere to the social distancing the best that we can and to protect the public uh, to our fullest, uh, fullest capability. So you'll see different levels of PPE that will be on, uh, even for routine calls that do not involve our, uh, our that does not involve the COVID-19 crisis. So um, uh, I want to reiterate, the public's doing a great job of not abusing the 911 system right now or even using more discretion than ever before. Uh, we appreciate that. Please keep that up. Again, though, it's a balance. We also want you to call us when you're needed, so, when we're needed. So if uh, it's particular to the COVID-19, if you become what we call cyanotic, so you're starting to see some blueness around your, around your lips um, or on your face, uh, if you're having difficulty breathing or there's an altered level of consciousness, then uh, please do utilize that 911 system so that we can go ahead and assist you. And then of course, uh, the, the regular medical emergencies that, uh, that we always care for every day, those haven't changed. If you're having uh, chest pains, if you're having a, um, you know, a, a diabetic issue, or, or of course, if there's an emergency uh, involving a, a vehicle accident or a fire, we're there to assist you and we're, and we're ready to go. General, do you have any words that you'd like to say? First of all, thank you, commissioners and everyone. Uh, I, I can't echo enough that you're doing the exact right thing. And uh, we get a chance to watch this nationwide and see uh, from, our, from my peer group some of the strategies and how they're working in collaboration with their respective communities. It's the exact right thing that's, that's happening here. I just want to say also that for your National Guard, we are here to support. Uh, the chief said it exactly in terms of we were here as a resource. We can help with uh, logistics, transportations. Uh, if you get to more drive-through testing, anything like that, we will work under his direction to make sure that we are here as a force multiplier. And anything we can do to protect the citizens of Nevada, I will promise you the guard is always ready, always there. Thank you. Sir, can you keep your name and right? Yes, my name is Andre Berry, O-N-D-R-A-B-E-R-R-Y. I'm the Adjutant General for the State of Nevada, Major General Berry. Thank you. Thank you, General. Uh, Mason, uh, if you'd like to go ahead and come up now, then uh, I'll turn it over to, to Mason from UMC to go ahead and, uh, and further this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Steinbeck and General. Um, Mason Van Howling, Chief Executive Officer of University Medical Center. I uh, just wanted to give you an update from my last update uh, in regards to the hospitals and the, the facilities here in Clark County. Just, just know Nevada hospitals and our local hospitals in the Valley are working tirelessly to prepare for a surge uh, here in Las Vegas. Um, we have uh, working uh, every day and every night, um, but we anticipate an increase in, and we're seeing an increase in COVID-related symptoms. First of all, I just want to say thank you to the community for staying home and being safe. Uh, it is working. Um, thank you for only seeking out medical care if you absolutely, absolutely need it. It's helping our emergency rooms and our hospital beds as we speak and utilizing those things like telemedicine or ask a doc or ask a nurse has helped and always reach out to your primary care physician uh, for your medical needs. But if, if you're acute or severe, please seek out the emergency rooms if you absolutely need it. Um, I also want to just say thank you to our community, community, our wonderful community that continues, that have and continues to donate PPE to our first responders and our hospitals. It is making a dent in it, um, so it is helping, so please continue to uh, help us out in that regards. Just some of the projections uh, related to the Institute for Health and Metrics and Evaluation. It's estimated that the state of Nevada will reach its peak um, around Friday, April 17th, with the potential of ICU bed shortages. I just wanted to take you through some of the Clark County numbers as far as our beds and occupancy and then get into a little bit of a specific with UMC. So Clark County, um, we have 609 beds, uh, ICU beds, uh, 40, 481 of those are occupied as we speak, about 79%. Our ventilators, uh, 681, and those ventilator numbers continue to go up, whether it's 
our emergency response or the guard or our hospitals continue to source ventilators. But out of the 681, 348 are occupied or 51% of our ventilators. And then our overall hospital census of 4,542 uh, 4, beds um, is at 65% occupancy with 2,935 2, of those beds occupied. At UMC in particular, we have 106 ICU beds. Uh, 83 of those are occupied. Um, that is down um, over the last couple of days. Our ventilators um, are 133 ventilators at UMC. That's, we're at 60 uh, this morning, and that's down um, about uh, 3 or 4% from the last couple of days. Um, of those, 32 patients are uh, COVID patients utilizing ventilators. And our overall bed occupancy is about 60%. Just in the valley, um, we've got 314 patients, positive COVID patients admitted, with about 300 that are uh, PUIs or suspect patients. The average age of the patient that we're seeing is about 52, um, and right now 55% uh, are female, 45% are male. Um, just some of the highlights throughout the week and that we're doing on the patient care front. Uh, we have, uh, in, to, in order to preserve our ventilators, um, our medical community here in Las Vegas has uh, been proning patients, which is basically turning them on their stomach in a swimmer position, um, which has allowed us to use high flow cannulas uh, to help keep patients off ventilators and keep them off mechanical devices. We're seeing that work in our hospitals, which I think is making a huge dent in use, utilizing uh, ventilators. Um, we've also heard about some of the screening protocols that you heard last night from the White House. We all are implementing those screening protocols for our healthcare workers. Um, we've also, uh, in the last two days, set up a medical surge tent, a 22-bed tent outside the hospital of UMC, but many other hospitals are doing the same. And just on the PPE, we are in current yellow status, um, which means uh, we're, we're okay, but uh, we could be very quickly fall into, as we see the surge, uh, into a red status. So continue to please uh, help us out with PPE uh, where you can. So with that... Um, I'll take questions later as the rest of the group, but I'm gonna introduce Dr. Legan, who is our director of the uh, Southern Nevada Health District. Dr. Legan. Thank you, my son. Good morning. My name is Fermin Legan, acting uh, chief health officer, Southern Nevada Health District. Um, first, um, I want to say that uh, up today, we have uh, 2009 confirmed cases of coronavirus in our community. Uh, that includes uh, 71 deaths. And really, uh, I want to express uh, our condolence to the family who have lost a, a loved one. Uh, we recognize the, the extraordinary work that is being done by our colleagues at the hospitals and uh, medical centers and, and primary care offices to make sure that our community receives the best possible medical service. And unfortunately, still, we, we are losing loved ones. So I just want to express our condolence for that. Uh, I also want to say that uh, starting uh, yesterday, we, we are offering a, an estimate on the number of recovered uh, patients. And I emphasize uh, estimate because so, uh, due to the large volume of cases that we have in our community, our surveillance staff is, is not enough to actually do a, a full follow-up in terms of asking a, a previous patients about their, their recovery. So we are estimating that based on uh, different elements or criteria that we are using for that purpose. Uh, right now, we estimate uh, about uh, 727 individuals have been recovered from the disease in our community, which is about 36% of, of the total patients. Uh, I also want to talk about uh, the mask. And as you know, the CDC in recent days, they modified the recommendation for the use of masks to the public. And now uh, the CDC is recommending that uh, everybody, once uh, you are in, in, in public places, uh, should wear a mask. And they are recommending any kind of clothing covering uh, your face. Uh, it doesn't have to be a surgical mask or an N95 mask. Uh, those two uh, kind of masks are uh, reserved for uh, 
uh, healthcare providers and primary uh, uh, and first responders uh, because of, uh, as you heard before, uh, we are running into a, a, a deficit of those of masks. Uh, uh, actually, myself, I, I'm wearing a homemade mask. Uh, actually, my wife made this for me, so that's what I'm wearing. Uh, I'm not trying to wear a, a, a 95 or anything like that, so just not, I'm not trying to take uh, any advantage from the system, just using the same that we are recommending for the public. And it is important because by wearing the, uh, this closing material, when we are in public, we actually are uh, protecting the public. We are uh, preventing ourselves from, from spreading the coronavirus to other members of the community. Uh, as, as we heard from uh, multiple sources, the, this is a virus that uh, could be transmitted by uh, people who have no, no symptoms, no signs of the disease. And, and that could be somewhere between 25 or to 50% of people who are uh, infected. So even if we go with the lowest uh, figure of 25%, we're talking about one out of four individuals infected who had no sign of symptoms and is able to uh, transmit the disease. So it's important for us to protect uh, uh, our community for that. Uh, also, uh, it's important as well as we wear the mask or, or this uh, fascia closing to make sure that we keep uh, uh, social distancing. And, and the recommendation is to stay at least uh, uh, six feet or two meters uh, you know, from other people, especially uh, when you go to public places like a supermarket where it's very difficult, almost impossible to keep that social distancing. Well, uh, we emphasize to please make sure that you wear a mask so you are protecting uh, yourself and, and the public. Um, I also uh, want to take a talk about testing. Uh, testing has been uh, improving in the community as, as we progress. Um, from the public health standpoint, uh, our, our lab here in Southern Nevada uh, has increased its capacity in recent days. And, uh, we had a limitation with the number of extraction kits. It's, it's, it's an element that uh, uh, allows uh, the lab to, to run the coronavirus test. Uh, now we have about uh, 8,000 of those kits, and, and right now our lab capacity for testing uh, grew up to about uh, 5,000 tests. Uh, our daily capacity is uh, about 60 tests per day. We also uh, have been partnering with our public health lab in the north in Reno and also with uh, the lab at UMC uh, as well. They, they have helped us when we have been uh, overwhelmed with the number of, of specimens to process a, a, a single day. Um, and I also want to say that uh, right now, there are other hospitals in the area that also have uh, in-house testing for coronavirus, which is very helpful uh, for our response. Uh, also, I want to repeat what I had said last week. Uh, right now, uh, we have the commercial labs are available uh, for testing, and that uh, allows the, uh, the primary care providers or your doctor's office to be able to test you for, for coronavirus if they have uh, that suspicion. Uh, I also want to say that uh, uh, the health district has been uh, assisting is, is our partners in the community. In recent days, we have been working with uh, the Salvation Army and also uh, Catholic Charities uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, with uh, issues that they had in terms of screening uh, and testing uh, the, the clients, uh, uh, members of the homeless population who represented with respiratory signs of symptoms. And, and there were concerns about a uh, coronavirus transmission. So we helped them with that. And also uh, we share part of our uh, personal protective equipment with them. Even so that uh, as everybody knows, uh, all agencies right now are close to yellow or, or close to being in the, in the red with uh, uh, personal protective equipment. 
I, I just uh, 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 want to emphasize that uh, in, in terms of general precaution for this disease, which is important, uh, first, uh, again, uh, making sure that we keep social distancing, uh, staying home as much as possible. If we have to go out in public, please uh, bring a mask or, or fascia clothing with you so you protect yourself and, and those around you. If you have any sign or symptom uh, that you might suspect is related to coronavirus, uh, any respiratory sign or symptoms, uh, before going to your, to your doctor, please call that office and, and let them know that you are presenting with, with those signs and symptoms so they, they can give you recommendations over the phone or they, or they might ask you to come over. Uh, right now, most medical offices uh, are offering uh, telemedicine, so they, they most likely will provide advice to you over the phone or an electronic device, and they will tell you exactly what you need to do, and if you need testing, they will give you the instruction how to, to get that done. And I also want to emphasize that uh, for this disease, uh, coronavirus, uh, uh, testing is important, but uh, it's more important uh, for those who have a severe uh, sign of symptoms, and those are uh, usually uh, the patients who go to the emergency department or the hospitals, uh, most of the presentation for this disease are uh, mild symptoms, uh, which usually uh, don't, don't require uh, testing. Uh, and, and then your, your doctor might give you instruction about basically stay home and, and, and just uh, be safe. So, uh, having said that, I, I want to introduce the mayor of uh, the city of North Las Vegas, uh, Mayor Lee, please. Thank you, doctor. I used to think that superintendent, I was, I told everybody that Superintendent Jara had the toughest job in the state of Nevada, being the superintendent of Clark County School District, but at this point in time, you do have the toughest job in Nevada, and we appreciate all that you're doing. I want to thank the uh, Southern Nevada Health Department Board for what they're doing, and Scott Black as their leader, and Chairman Kirkpatrick as vice chair of that committee, and your leadership at the county commission. Uh, we need the county commission to continue to be at the forefront of what we're doing. The city depends so much on the county. You are such an integral part of the success of this whole state. Um, we are following state's directives in North Las Vegas, and we are trying to get this over with as quick as we can onto the recovery sooner. Our residents are doing a great job in that. They're, they're paying attention and we have uh, got the word out. Our city staff is working with, uh, we've got some sh sent over to the fire department. We're calling businesses. We're letting them know what we do. Um, we have had, had no enforcement yet on business licenses of people who are not doing the directive that we're supposed to be following about essential and non-essential businesses. Yesterday, we took the proactive step of setting penalties for anyone who violates emergency directives. And this also helps us as the governor finds more reasons to send more directives. We don't have to have special city council meetings to vote on these things. Whatever directives that the state sends us that will keep our residents safe, <coughs> we, will, we will just automatically in, I, I apply them and enforce them. This is brought on by Councilman Barone who, like the rest of us, received complaints about residents being locked out of the home when they went to the store to get some food or to do something they needed to do. So the directives that we put together are going to uh, penalize anybody who violates those directives. I uh, also want you to know that we've, uh, we are doing the best we can with our employees. We're doing a lot of work at home. We're social distancing. And our business code enforcement, um, men and women are staying at home. We're having uh, the contractor hold a camera and show everything that's happened on, in, the, in the inspection process. And uh, we are doing a great job there keeping the city open. And although this has disrupted our lives day to day, day in and day out, we will come out of this stronger. We will be prepared next time something happens like this to take it more seriously in North Las Vegas and in the county, 
to have an action plan that's developed from this experience. So we appreciate you, Chairman Kirkpatrick, thank you for putting this on, and we're looking forward to brighter days. And I, with that, I get the opportunity to also introduce another wonderful mayor from Boulder City, Mary McManus. Thank you. Um, again, I, I'd just like to echo much of what's already been said here. Uh, the help that the Clark County government has provided. Uh, we're a small city in Boulder City. Uh, we rely on that type of assistance from others. I also had conversations or was in uh, meeting, telephone meetings with uh, Representative Susie Lee and Representative Dina Titus yesterday. I know that our federal delegation is working very hard to get funding to us uh, and also to look forward to how we recover from this. In Boulder City, uh, it, you know, I was, um, I'm a native of Boulder City. It never ceases to amaze me the type of volunteer spirit that always comes out in our community. Uh, so I want to really thank the nonprofits that we have out there that work year after year, but especially at a time like this, have stepped up. Our senior center, uh, emergency aid, lend a hand. Uh, we've also been getting volunteers just calling our city staff volunteering their time, they're able to make calls out to our community, touch base with some of those folks who may not be hearing from others. It's already been mentioned, you know, call your neighbors, call your friends, call your family, let them know that you're thinking of them, that there is help out there for people. Uh, there are many resources right now that I think people need to be aware of, and, and if they need that help, please ask for it. Uh, I also want to say thanks to all the healthcare workers that have done such a great job. Uh, we have a small hospital out in Boulder City as well as the Nevada State Veterans Home. Uh, those people are on the front lines putting their lives at risk so that all of us can be safer. So again, I want to really thank all of them. We're going blue this week for uh, recognizing the efforts that they have. and. Uh, Lastly, I'll just say that, uh, again, we are going to get through this, and this is going to be difficult for many of us. Uh, there is a lot of help out there, so please ask for it. And with that, I'll return it back to uh, Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Thank you. And again, um, this is the importance of how great our community is when we work across aisles, across a county line, uh, city and county lines, so that we're all working together. And last week we told you about the importance of the multi-agency uh, group that comes together. We meet once a week. Uh, we meet on Mondays. Uh, and we talk about the issues that are coming up through the week. So this is a testament to what we do best in our community. Um, last week, I asked you all, I gave you some things that we needed, right? Some donations, some locations to look at, and you, the community, came through with tons of places for, we, um, for us to look at. This week, I'm asking, <clears throat> you know, everybody says, what can I do? You can stay home this week, take a deep breath, be patient. There's a lot of uh, nonprofit uh, agencies both state and local government that are trying to help you to put all those resources in. And if you could just stay home this week, be patient, check on your neighbor, that will be beneficial to our essential workers that we have out across the community. So um, please, it's so important. I couldn't, I can't tell you how that is. Um, secondly, if you really want um, to do something that's gonna make a huge impact in our community as we come out of this and we start to recover, please fill out the census. I cannot stress the importance of filling out that census because today, as we're in the fight of our life to get our fair share from the federal government, we're a small state and this does make a difference on how we get these resources. We know that it's gonna be 12 to 18 months at a minimum for us to start to come out of this. So I need everybody rested. I need people ready to go because we are coming into our peak season and there is gonna be a lot of a lot of ways that you can help. There's gonna be a lot of ways that you can help us recover and move forward. So with that, um, I can't thank the community enough for coming together. This is the very place that 
I grew up in that I love to call my home, and these are all the reasons that I do um, call it my home. So we'll open it up for questions, um, any questions that you want. What I'll ask the uh, speakers is to repeat the questions so that everybody's very clear on what's being asked. So I, I'll open it up for questions at this time. Yep. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Uh, so the question is, uh, are, how are we seeing the effects of social distancing impact the hospitals here in Clark County and throughout the state? Um, and what effects are we seeing? I, I, we look at a lot of models um, throughout the community, and we are seeing lower projections than what we've seen. Um, you know, the generals here too, I think, from a state standpoint in Clark County, um, we are seeing the, it be effective. Could we do more? Absolutely. And you've heard that from all of our uh, speakers here today, Dr. Lagan uh, said it very well that very mild symptoms, um, you know, we know testing is limited, but mild symptoms can be stayed home and worked through with your primary care physician. But we absolutely, if you're severe respiratory illness, acute underlying symptoms, seek out emergency care for sure. But um, my anecdotal and, and just uh, what we've seen is uh, the volumes could have been a lot worse if we didn't implement a lot of things that we've done here in the state, the county, the city. So, as Commissioner Kirkpatrick mentioned, our collaboration has been amazing and it's been very effective. And uh, we did a lot of things very early on to, to minimize uh, as much as we can. And, and then we continue to work through uh, what we're learning from other states and other providers. And, and we're on a lot of calls where we're sharing information, but um, it is being effective, um, but we can do better. Um, and, and like Commissioner Kirkpatrick said, stay home, be safe take a pause uh, this week because we are anticipating approaching uh, some peaks uh, over the next couple of weeks. So it's been very helpful. Okay. Sure, uh, and the question, I'm gonna probably defer it to my very good friend, Dr. Legan, because um, it, it sounded like a health district question, but Dr. Legan, it was the question about reporting numbers more frequently um, so we can uh, capitalize or uh, um, formalize some of the numbers that we're seeing on some of our positives and suspect patients. So did I, did I get that right? Yes. Okay, so uh, testing more frequently, or reporting more frequently, sir. Okay, thank you. Well, actually, there is a daily report uh, for, uh, regarding the number of, of confirmed cases in the state and the county. Uh, it is published every day. So I, I don't know. We, we, can, we can share with you where you can find that, but it is actually a, a daily report that is available to the public through the state website and our, our website as well. Um, and so uh, let me help with that. So um, that is actually something that um, through the state uh, at the end of every day, um, because what's happening is the numbers are changing constantly, right? So in order for us to give um, the public a consistent number, because what we found in the early beginning, and you have to understand from Clark County's perspective, we have 70% of the numbers, right? And the numbers are changing uh, as you heard. So at the end of every day, there is a number that is reported up to the state. And I believe it's 10 o'clock at every day the state releases that number for that time period. If we were trying to report um, as it happened, we would have numbers that would we couldn't actually verify to be true because they would be all over the place. So understand that today, um, the numbers are going in at the end of the day. Um, I believe it's three o'clock and then at 10 a.m. they are released because what we don't wanna do is put numbers out there that um, 
can't verify it because remember, we also have to notify families. We have to do um, reach out so that people know who's impacted and there's a whole investigation process that goes through. And you know, I wanna just uh, give a shout out to Dr. Lagon, right? Because in Southern Nevada, we get beat up a lot about we're not working as hard or as fast, but understand that we're, we're taking 75% of the cases across the state and um, we have the bulk of the population. So we, uh, I can tell you that the gentlemen um, that are all standing with me today, um, we don't sleep, right? Because our number one priority is public safety. Our number one, our second priority is making sure that we get good numbers that are out there. So we want to be very transparent on what we're doing, but we want it to be accurate. So I know that's a little more than you asked for, but um, every day those numbers change, every hour um, that number's changing, but we wanna give you a consistent time each and every day. And um, we, we'll work with the state to make sure, I think that there is a little bit of uh, discrepancy on the weekends, um, how those numbers come in, but we'll work with the state to ensure and General Barry that um, those numbers as well are, are getting reported. Oh, okay, uh, so uh, are you asking about uh, projections? Well, just six weeks from now, once people go back to work and things start to go back to normal, and it's hurt, how do we keep from that happening? Where are we going to have to our heads? Is there anything? How do we best protect from a resurgence? I don't get the question. Oh, oh this, this uh, one, I mean? yeah, um, so. Uh, so the question is, is um, as we go throughout the summer and the, and the fall, will we see a, a second wave of this um, is the question. Oh. And uh, maybe, you know, we, we live with the flu every year. And we, we go through cycles at hospitals. We're very seasonal, um, October to March, uh, when the weather uh, gets colder, immunes get suppressed, um, the runny noses, the coughs, the fevers, the sneezing, um, that all spreads flu viruses and Corona A viruses that are already out there. So um, yes, w will we see this, Mike, we will see this continue through the fall, um, especially since we don't have a vaccination. Um, and I know everybody's working very diligently on that, but we're finding ways to treat it. Um, and Dr. Legan said that mild symptoms, just like the flu today, um, if you show signs of the flu, we often don't test for it. We just treat you for that. So, um, but we know that one person can affect up to 50 people and 50 people can affect 500 people. So we will continue to social distance and once the emergency declarations are lifted and we're seeing a, the downward side of the curve, um, we'll see things um, back up a little bit. But um, will we see this in the fall? Um, I absolutely think we will. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, well, I mean, uh, to answer, the answer to that question is, uh, is, is almost impossible today because uh, this is a new uh, disease, it's, it's a new virus. Uh, there is no history on the behavior of this virus. Uh, so uh, even uh, the expectation of this, this might weighing and disappear during the summer, which is the typical behavior of respiratory uh, viruses, uh, it's an expectation that uh, almost everybody have, including us, but it's not certain because we don't know how this virus behave. Uh, whether the virus will be back in, in the fall or, or not, again, we don't know. Uh, this virus might eventually become uh, one more of the, of the uh, seasonal flu uh, uh, viruses circulating every year, like it uh, happened before uh, with the H1N1 that, you know, became a, 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 pan a pandemic worldwide, and then after that just was, was one, uh, one more of the, vi of the influenza viruses uh, circulating and was in incorporated into the different uh, uh, variables of the influenza vaccine in, in multiple years. Uh, this particular virus, again, uh, we don't know. 
nobody knows what uh, what the behavior will be. It wouldn't it wouldn't be surprising that the virus shows again in the fall, uh, because it, it wouldn't be the first time that a new virus do something like that. Um, the, the good the good news is that. Uh, the, the most likely scenario is that there, there would be a, a vaccine available, uh, but the, the vaccine probably wouldn't be available before the fall because typically a vaccine takes between 12 months and 18 months uh, unless there is a, a successful uh, accelerated process to get a vaccine. But again, the, there, there is no a right answer to your question because there is no any science supporting any, any kind of answer because there is no history for this virus. Um, the question was an update on the uh, isolation beds at Cashman. So uh, the current status in terms of the construction side of that um, is complete. Um, the key issue has been um, the staffing and related to really making sure it's the first um, pre-emergent, actually, uh, hospital for the homeless in the country. So one of the key pieces that's been um, focused on is making sure we are prepared um, in terms of how we flow clients through there. And then secondarily, in terms of providing that isolation in that time frame, we have to have mental health and program support. So um, the, the most recent timeline we have, we don't have an exact date yet, but we're looking um, within the next few days is the hope in terms of having that open, and particularly as it ties to the surge um, in terms of that. So we feel fairly prepared with that, in addition to the other beds that we've identified, because that will also help. So the question was if we've seen an uh, increase in COVID-19 uh, patients specific to the homeless or the vulnerable population. So interestingly enough, uh, from uh, if we go back about two weeks ago, um, in terms of those identified bed, we've seen a slight uptick in terms of those in need of placement. The larger issue has been tied to the shelters. So um, as you were aware at the last conference, we had Catholic Charities that had a uh, positive test which created um, some sheltering issues. Um, secondary to that, Salvation Army also had a positive test which created a temporary closure for, closure for one night. Um, but what we were able to do in the health district has been great in this along with our hospitals as we progress in terms of identifying those clients and getting them placed. So at the current time from a capacity issue, we feel fairly confident in terms of those clients coming through. Yes, so uh, the question is if we're still exploring um, availability of motels and other locations. The answer to that question is yes, yes, yes. Um, it's almost an hourly process. What I would want to highlight um, from our last press conference is we put out that plea for assistance and we did get inundated. Um, we've been able to manage that fairly well. Um, obviously, there's contractual issues tied to that, but we have been able to do that. Um, and we are still accessing motels, and that's part of those beds you're hearing about, both on the well care side and the crossroads side. Okay, I think we'll have time for one more question after this, but sure, go ahead. So the question was um, additional beds and, and in particular isolation beds. Um, I know every hospital in the community has increased their negative flow rooms to be able to contain viruses uh, within particular containment units within their hospital. So certainly uh, and we've all adjusted and, and, and converted beds that typically are not either ICU beds or negative flow beds of what we call, uh, but every hospital in the community has made those adjustments to accommodate um, not only protect the patient, but also protect the healthcare workers and making sure that they had the right PPE in those units. So uh, it has been an impact. So I think that was, uh, turn it back to you, Eric.
Thank you everybody for coming. I just want to make, uh, uh, remind you that if you go to our website at uh, clarkcountymv.gov, uh, you'll find a whole list of resources and uh, information about where you can make donations and volunteer and do other things to sort of help us get us through this effort. We appreciate you coming and uh, we'll have another update uh, soon. Thank you.